We're doing something different today, something that I usually tell companies I'm not doing. We're doing multiple pedals on a board. Of course, companies want to, you know, pay me to show as much as possible. And I always say, that's not what I do. I do in-depth reviews of individual pedals so that you can make an informed buying decision, taking it with different guitars into different amps and playing it in a musical context and all this. So for my expectations in myself and my own quality. I refuse to do multiple pedals in one video because these usually get very, very long and you don't really learn anything in depth about the pedal you're about to buy. But my JCM 800 crapped out on me and I called the new distributor of Marshall and said, can you help me fix them? So we started talking and they are also the new distributor, the new distributor, the new distributor for MXR slash Dunlop slash Way Huge, which all kind of comes from the same people with different sub brands. And they have a whole bunch of new stuff on the market, which they're now taking to stores. And they say, well, we have a board. Could you review the whole board? And well, review is a little bit tough, but that's exactly what we're doing, guys. I told them I do not do demos. I do reviews, which means I will tell you what I think. In this case, we have to do something special. We have to look at everything for a limited amount of time, and we're doing a first reaction. So I have not really spent any more time other than probably 30 seconds with each pedal just to see what it does before you know we set up the video. And that's what we're doing. So I'm going to tell the Amazon lady, I'm not saying her name, uh, give me a two minute time limit, and we're looking at each pedal for two minutes and fiddle around with it, gauge my first reaction. Everything into the Tone King Sky King into the Ox with the Cream back loaded 412, unless I think it's a pedal that would be great as a boost. And then we're going into the Morgan MVP 66, which is kind of a Marshall Lee JTM, very classic amp that would like to be boosted. And they're not really getting the full review of the pedal like I would usually do. So if you're interested to have me check out one of these or several of these in depth, Please comment, then they can read that and think about whether or not they want to invest the money in me doing more of it. Because really, the in-depth stuff, I think, is what sells, and that's where you really see what's happening. But here's the whole board. So let's go through it. Deep Phase is a classic MXR phaser. There's Phase 90s and all that stuff, but it is actually what it says on the tin. It is deeper and more drastic. Um, I can already tell you that I think that this blue octave thing is probably uh, the octave pedal right now to get. Based on 30 seconds with it, I know that this has features that are tough to beat. I don't know the price of it. I don't know the price of any of them. Uh, Super Badass looks like an overdrive thing. We're going to check it out. Um, fat Sugar is pink. And from what I can tell, it's kind of like a tube screamery idea, maybe. Now, this is, of course, what you want to know, the Duke of Tone. Uh, first reaction was like, I don't know about it, but we'll see. The Atreides is from a sandy world, if you know what I'm talking about, and it's completely messed up and weird. Um, Power 50 is big and red, and I don't quite know exactly what the idea there is. Wait, what's the thing on the back? Okay, I literally don't know. It's got two more ins and outs. Maybe that's a loop. I don't know. And then the Red Llama by Way Huge is uh, another overdrive. So we got drives and drives and drives and an octave and a weird thing and a face. Oh, let's not forget, on the board, of course, is a crybaby. I do not know what's special about it. Again, it's it's I'm reacting to it. So I, I know it's red and white, which is way cool. It has a light, which is actually very, very nice because we can actually... Leslie went exactly to the wrong camera there. <laughs> it has a light, Leslie. Um, there, look. It has a light, which is very nice. So you can actually see if it's on. And um, since it's on the table, we can't really wide with the foot. And then this is uh, volume X8. So it's a volume slash expression pedal. Right now, I think it's volume weight. But it's also connected to the poly blue octave, but I don't know if we can switch it from expression to volume. I don't think we can, so I don't quite know how that works. Um, everything's powered by the MXR isobrick, which is rather small. Um, it's got a, a selectable voltage of uh, uh, 6 to 15 volts on the first one with 250 milliamps. 
Um, then we got 250, 450, 300, 100, and then can't tell. Probably similar. 250s. So a decent power. Is it something like the trucks with 660 on each? No. But uh, it's not just all 100 and then you can't really power digital pedals with it. It's, it's a decent power. I, again, do not know how much it is. Um, Oh, there are actually two outputs where you can starve the voltage, which is kind of nice for your fuzz people. We don't have a cutout because how we're going to do that, we're just going to show the whole board when I'm fiddling. So I will start with the deep face, maybe throw in some drive with that as well. This is the Vola Oz ROA for the roasted maple neck. Nice guitar, flexible enough for what we need to do. And again, it's going into the Tone King unless I tell you otherwise. So let's start with the face. This is the clean sound. It's a nice and lush and deep face. I forgot to set the timer. Alexa, timer zwei Minuten. Zwei Minuten ab jetzt. There's no mix or depth, but there's a mode two, which is even depthier. I mean, it's severe, it's deep, it's super easy to set up, it does the job if you want the drastic -y phases for your beautiful clean pads, or what I just did, if you want the eddy kind of stuff and really just have the, the phaser really be heard and not subtly in the background. Uh, a great pedal. Don't know how much it is, but come on, that's cool. Um, how we're going to do the poly blue octave in, in two minutes, I don't know. Let's look at the controls first and then we're going to start the two minutes. So. We have a mod which you can dial in. There's a dry signal, so you only have the octaves or you're mixing in your dry more. And you've got a plus octave, plus two octaves, sub one, sub two. So technically this is kind of like a mini pog with four different octaves. There's a fuzz you can click in. And this is a mono mode because this is a polyphonic octave pedal based on the features alone. This is probably the one you want to get because everything is hands-on, no hidden menus. I didn't read any manual about it, but I kind of know what it does. So, here. 
Alexa, Timer, zwei Minuten. Zwei Minuten ab jetzt. Our time is over. We would need a lot more time with this pedal. There is a lot to discover. Whether you're doing ambient, whether you're doing bass, um, I didn't even know. Wait a second. We have to. I, I can't tell what it does with expression because when I use the expression pedal, the volume goes down. So again, this is all something for a big video uh, on the Poly Blue Octave. I'm gonna call it holy crap. Everything right there, fiddleable. It, it, you know what it does. Monophonic, polyphonic, four different octaves, and modulation. It, it does a little bit of a wiggle. Okay. Um, moving on to the super badass dynamic OD. We're going to say Alexa, timer, zwei Minuten. Zwei Minuten ab jetzt. Dynamic apparently means it's compressing like crazy. Maybe the tone's cutting now. Let's take it into the MEP 66. And now we turn the pedal on.
Alexa, anhalten. Holy crap, two minutes isn't long. I like it. Uh, I like it. Pushing the amp, it, the amp behaves beautifully. Uh, it's a mid-gain, low-gain to mid-gain thing. And it feels like the dynamic thing means it's extremely compressed. When I'm pulling back my picking, the level stays up here, but it is less driving. So the volume kind of seems to stay the same while the overdrive is less. Let me... Back to the Tone King. Fat Sugar is coming up and we're going to go Alexa, Timer, zwei Minuten. Two minutes from now. Morgan by itself. First impression of the, actually, what's the cat doing? Of the uh, fat sugar, I as, as I said before, I think it is a tube scream uh, resk thing. Even if it isn't, e even if it isn't, even if it's based on who knows what circuit. I don't care about the stuff. I care about how I would use it in a musical context, and I would use it like a tube screamer. Thin out the bass, get me that beautiful, classy kind of overdrive to push an amp into more drive, or to actually get an amp to respond better because it's thinning out the low end so the amp isn't flabbing out. Uh, it's not green, but that's how I would use it, and the controls suggest a similar thing. It might be a completely different circuit, but I don't care. It, it matters how one would use it. Um, now, haha, now it gets difficult. Let's preface it. The King of Tone. Two sides of a three knob overdrive based on a, I think, Marshall Blues Break, everything, versions of it. You can. This is Zephod. Oh, Zephod smells. Did you fart? Uh, the King of Tone can be ordered in different variations more distorting, more boosty, more overdrivey. Uh, but when you order it, I think by now you wait four and a half years. No pedal in the world is worth waiting four and a half years for. Um, there were rumors of uh, Mike Piera, the guy behind the King of Tone, uh, maybe retiring. I don't know how this happened. I don't really follow this stuff uh, online. MXR somehow partnered and they're doing something probably in license. And so this is supposed to be King of Tony. Of course, for anyone who is insane enough to order one and wait for four and a half years, nothing is going to be a King of Tone except the King of Tone. So whether you're getting a Wampler Pantheon, which gets you exactly the King of Tone sounds, or a Duke of Tone, which is licensed, this is all not going to matter to you because it doesn't say Analog Man on it. So you guys who want a King of Tone, whatever I say, you don't really care anyway. Um, 
But let's check it out. I've had a King of Tone here when I uh, compared it to the Wampler Pantheon. So I know what it's supposed to feel like. I can't really do an AB comparison because I don't have one because I'm not an insane maniac who waits for four and a half years for a pedal that he has to then order through Switzerland and then pick it up there or something because they don't ship to Germany directly. I'm not crazy. You are. Um, Alexa, timer, zwei Minuten. Morgan And that was two minutes. If you want to know more, right below, we're going to take it through the paces, through its paces. Alexa, anhalten. My feeling is I'm not getting the same feel from the King of Tone. That is because the King of Tone I had was a special order again, as they all are, and it was voiced differently. This has a lot of treble, which is nice. Being able to get brightness that's not too harsh out of your sound is cool. Uh, I'm missing some gain. Even on the distortion setting, there is an overdrive in boost, and I can't really tell a big difference between the overdrive and the boost setting and the distortion setting. So technically, this is three different sounds, but you could see I have the drive all the way up. So I was I was hoping for a bit more singing, but then again, maybe it is meant to be stacked with other pedals to get that king of tone singy sound. I like the treble side, but when I turned on the King of Tone, I immediately said, oh, okay, I get it. I get why people want to play this. There's a ploppy kind of attack, and there's something beautiful about it, which other pedals in this in the similar manner can get you as well. I said it, Wampler Pantheon. It can. When we forget about what this is supposed to be and talk about what I just experienced, it's a nice pedal with a nice treble boost, which you can, of course, roll off with the tone, that by itself gets you nice low-gain sounds and in front of an amp can push your amp into beautiful singing drive. That's that's my reaction after two minutes with it, which again, it's not maybe the fairest assessment, but that's what we're here for. Um, we're gonna get to the Atreides, which I think is a fuzz with a filter and a sub octave. Two minutes with that? I don't know what to expect, but it's definitely doing this which no matter what I set up, I can't get rid of. So you kind of have to play it to get rid of that.
Why don't we just play it a bit? Look, hey, they didn't hire me. I mean, they might have thought that they hired me to make their stuff look good. It's technically why companies think they hire someone like me, but they had me to turn the board on and play. That's what I'm doing. But cool, cool sounds can be had. I think this goes in the direction of what Game Changer Audio is doing with the plasma pedal and stuff like this, or Btronics maybe. <laughs> Alexa, timer, zwei Minuten. Yeah, there is a sensitivity on it, which means it's very likely envelope control. So when I'm pulling back the volume, uh, it's reacting more. So there's a frequency thing. There's some kind of LFO because there's a rate. There's a fuzz in it, obviously, a sub octave and some kind of uh, envelope. <laughs> And the time is over. Alexa, anhalten. This also would warrant a lot more in-depth lookage. There, there's a lot to discover, obviously. We're moving on to the Power 50. Looks like, I would say, probably something pre ampy We got volume-based middle treble gain and presence. Probably very amp-like overdrive. Oh, we were still pushing the Atreides into the Morgan, which we, uh, it doesn't matter. Even, okay, for full disclosure, I'll pump it into the Tone King. <laughs> Not a massive difference there. It's so crazy that no matter what you're going to push it into, uh, it's going to be crazy. And into the power 50. We're going to go in the back already. Alexa, time that's coming. Getting a JCM 800 vibe with a really big, exaggerated low end. something because I think that's what it's meant to do. Thank you. 
Okay, I get it. Alexa, anhalten. First of all, the light on this thing. I mean, check it out from from above. Can you see this clearly? Okay, from where I'm sitting, this is clear from the side. This from where I'm sitting, I have no idea whether it's on or not. But you can see that this is quite a bit higher there, or light brighter. And this is not. Uh, please, MXR, give the fat sugar a brighter light. This is down here, it's okay. So the Power 50, I think it's meant to be an amp platform to either probably be a preamp into a power amp directly, kind of like the Seymour Duncan power stage or something like this, or maybe into a power amp from your amp, or actually give something like the Tone King more of that classic Marshall 800 blown up -edness. Again, the manual might say something completely different, different topology, all that. I'm just telling you what I feel I'm experiencing, which has its own merits. So by itself, not flooring me, it will give you that uh, and I think a great platform to, to be stacked with a boost pedal or especially with a fat sugar, that was fun. So maybe the perfect rock and roll pedal when you have other drives in front of it. I'm gonna go to the Red Llama. Uh, two knobs, I mean, drive and volume, what, what, what else do you want? See if I'm tuned. And um, Alexa, time at zwei Minuten. Zwei Minuten, ab jetzt. Love that. out over leaves the crybaby to be played with a hand which is kind of dumb but um that's that's what's happening um I, I like the red llama i mean there's you know low gain beautiful high gain beautiful uh a thicker distortion definitely not your tube screamy kind of pedal that's all i can tell you it's it's cool uh, that that's about it and um <laughs> Nice wide sweep.
You know the deal. Hey, it's a crybaby. That's what a crybaby is supposed to, supposed to do. It says crybaby on the side. It's a uh, uh, white and red. I don't know if there's anything different with the circuit uh, because you know this. I just react to the board, and that was it. So overall, I know I'm being paid for this video, but realistically, not not a bad one in the bunch. I was disappointed at first from the Duke of Tone because I thought it was more like the King of Tone, more thicky more with that attack that really impressed me more with the gain but it is more on the treble side but again maybe that was just the king of tone i had here what do i know i can only tell you my own experiences i'm not gonna repeat something someone else said uh, as a boost and low gain overdrive with a beautiful amount of top end duke of tone also delivers fat sugar one tricky pony but it does the trick that uh, super badass, I don't know if you need that and the fat sugar, uh, but if you want something super compressed, super badass could be a thing. Uh, Poly Blue Octave is probably the octave pedal that you should be buying if you're buying an octave pedal just based on a two minute ev evaluation. The deep phase is cool, it's, uh, it's, it's phasing, but more. Uh, Atreides, what do I know? If you like crazy shit, check it out. Power 50, disappointing by itself, with the pedal driving it, kicks ass. And uh, the Red Llama is a thick, nice overdrive. Uh, that's about it. And, and, and if I were to buy uh, Crybaby, why not buy the red one that's white, that has a light on it? That's it. If you want to see any of this in depth, then the in-depthitude you shall have. And I shall negotiate with the new distributors, see if they want to invest in more in-depth videos where we send them into all kinds of different amps, uh, different guitars, in a produced track, all that stuff. But obviously, I can't do this with the full board. So that being said, I'm out of here. I'll put links below to everything that you've heard. And animals at the end, as always. Under the sky.